An entitled jerk steals the bricks that were sitting in front of my house, claiming that he had every right to them as they were sitting on city property. And I've honestly never been more blown away by someone's ignorance and entitlement in my life. Here's what happened. Okay, so some things are just hard to fathom. Our house is on a down slope and the front patio sits below the street. Even though we live in a metro area, our streets do not have sidewalks, just the street and a dirt area between the road and our fence. This area between actually belongs to the city, but as is usual, the property owners are required to maintain it. Last summer, I had just decided to give it a small makeover and had pulled up the bricks that had been framing the plant area and stacked them against the fence, all while I decided exactly what I wanted to do with them. Well, one evening during this time, my family and I were sitting around our fire table out on the front patio, enjoying a nice evening. My sons and their significant others had driven over to visit us, and one had parked on the side of the road in front of our fence. We were all sitting around chatting and having a nice time, and I was facing the upslope and happened to notice the shape of someone walking by, but between the car and our fence. Now, that's not a big deal. I had just dug up the plants that had been there, but it was a little weird because this is a little tight and there was more room on the street side. I didn't think too much about it until I saw someone do it again. Now, it's not a busy street, so there really was no need to go that way. I thought something was off because they had to deliberately make the choice to take a narrow path instead of taking the easier one. So, I decided to see exactly what was going on. I walked up the stairs and looked at the area between the car and the fence, and I was stunned to see almost all the bricks were gone. I looked down the street, and there is the young 20-something year old boy riding away on a bicycle with some of the bricks in his basket. And I think to myself, in that moment, what is happening right now? I yelled after him, and he stopped and looked back. I walked over to him, and I asked him, what's going on? I say to him, hey, what are you doing with my bricks? This guy says, they were just sitting there, so I thought I would take them. Now, keep in mind, he had to park his bike and walk between the car and the fence just to reach them. And six people were sitting 20 feet away with three of them facing him. I say to him, those bricks belong to me. Why would you think you could just take them? That's stealing. The entitled jerk said to me, I'm not stealing. They were on land owned by the city. And so they must be free to anybody. I said to him, no, that's not how it works. It may be the city land, but I'm required to maintain it. And even if they were the cities, you would still be stealing the bricks from them. The guy looked at me and said, well, I was told differently so I just decided I could have them. I looked at him and I said, stop trying to justify stealing. I need you to take those bricks on the bike back to where you got them and then go get the other ones that you stole right now. This conversation was repeated many times as he kept defending his actions and it took over 10 minutes to convince him that he had to return the bricks. He seemed so confused, looking at me with big sad eyes, like they were just sitting there in front of my house, so of course they're not mine. And that somehow gives him the right to take it. He looked as if he was hurt as if he was asking why I was accusing him of stealing. For a minute, I felt like I kicked a puppy, but then I snapped out of it and I explained again to him exactly how the land use works, how it's wrong to take anything that doesn't belong to him, and once again, demanded that he return all of my bricks. I watched him take off his bike, then ride down the block and gather the rest. He brought them in one load at a time and restacked them in front of the fence. Now, I was steaming. I've never in all my life come across a person so ignorant in how the world works. And I gathered from what his roommates told him that there are more of them out there that think this way. And by the way, it turns out they are college students renting a house. And I honestly feel very sorry for their landlords and their teachers. Yeah, that's a really dumb excuse by that college kid because he literally stole someone's property and just said, what do you mean? It was on city property. That means I can have it for free, right? Like what in the world was he thinking? That is such an awful precedent to set. Now someone might be like, oh, come on, they're just bricks. Is it that big of a deal? But like in my opinion, yes, it absolutely is. That's someone's personal property. It doesn't matter if it's bricks. You can't just take something that isn't yours. So good for you for catching this thief in the act, as well as putting him in his place. Because I'm pretty sure if you turned a blind eye to it, I'm sure that this guy would have stolen more of your property. If you like Am I the Jerk, you're probably going to love Am I the Genius. Check it out, link down below in the description. Also, go to amithejerk.com slash submit if you would like to submit your own stories. An entitled Karen freaks out in my shop, claiming that her lip gloss was expired that she bought at my store and that she was now demanding a full refund as well as some new free lip gloss of her choice. But instead of giving in to her weird demands, I decided to stand up for myself and my shop by not only denying her service, but also choosing to ban her altogether. And I've honestly never felt better
share about my decision in my life. Here's what happened. This story also came from the Am I the Jerk subreddit. Check the links in the description if you would like to submit your own story. Okay, so for a bit of background, I started up my own company at the age of 17 with the help of my mom. I've been thriving for four years and have upgraded to a better shop. I do get some unhappy shoppers, but we always sort it out in the end. Now, fast forward when I was 21 years old, and this Karen, probably in her mid-30s, got into a fight because her lip gloss was expired. Now, I still don't get it, and this happened a year ago. I had seen this Karen multiple times in my shop, and she'd always put up some kind of fight to get discounts. Whether she would claim to know the owner, even though I am the owner, or she would be like, these are overpriced, I shouldn't have to pay that. In the end, though, she would always end up paying the right amount, and we'd move on with our days. But this certain day, she was very unhappy. She came in with one of the newest lip glosses that I had made and put out, and it was on sale for a discount of 20% and only 20%. I had put it out a week before she came in screaming her head off at me, disrupting the other happy customers that were shopping in peace. The lip gloss was Christmas-themed and had little sparkles in it and a red accent to it, just to enhance the lip color when someone applied it. She came up to the front desk where I was ringing someone up and started screaming at me to get a refund because her lip gloss was expired. She started shouting, My lip gloss is expired. I expect a full refund and a new free lip gloss of my choice. Now, knowing that sometimes this Karen can go bonkers, I calmly asked her what the problem was, and she answered by saying, My lip gloss is chunky. It's obviously expired. Now, I told her that lip gloss can last up to about five months to a little over a year, and that it was most likely the little sparkle flecks that had been added to it. And you know what she says to me in return? She said, and I quote, Well, I've had this lip gloss for nine months, so I guess it expired. I responded to her and I said, Ma'am, that lip gloss has been out for a little over a year. And I tried to say this calmly, knowing that I'd tell my mother all of this at the end of the day. I mean, it's crazy what people will do just to get a free product. She looked at me, obviously not knowing what to say, because how do you come back from getting called out? So she turns around, walked out, and dragged her toddler with her. She obviously left with a racket, calling me names and calling my shop names, and then just stomping away. So I called after her. I said to her, you're banned. Never come back here ever again. Now, she obviously heard me because she stopped a little over a second. And thankfully, my shop has been Karen free ever since. Yeah, what in the world is wrong with people? Like this Karen literally came in there just to try and lie and get free products. That is all that happened here. And that is so annoying. And I bet you it wasn't even like expired in any kind of way. I bet it's one of those situations where she was running out. So she thought to herself, okay, I could probably get a free one if I complain a little bit. And I don't know about you who's listening, but personally, I can't stand people who act this way. Like this really is such a cheap item altogether. And I really can't understand why anybody would freak out over something literally so small. It really makes me believe that some people actually do this on purpose just to try and like catch a deal or something like that. Like they go into these stores and they make this big fuss. Also, they can try and like pressure the person behind the counter so that they'll give in and they'll get free stuff. I haven't seen this in action like too many times in my life, but the times that I have seen it, it is horrendous. The person on the other end of the counter looks absolutely stressed out of their mind and it's just not a fun time for anybody who has to watch it or any managers that have to come up and try to resolve it. But thankfully, the owner of the shop was there and they could actually ban the Karen on the spot. And I'd like to imagine that that was really satisfying to do, especially after all the problems that this Karen caused in their shop. Am I the jerk for refusing to help my parents out for the last few months of me living at home? Because right now, they are furious that I'm refusing to step up. And at this point, I seriously don't know what to do. Here's what happened. Okay, to start things out, my parents have three kids. There's me, a 17-year-old male, my sister, who's 15, and my other sister, who's 12. My 12-year-old sister has been really sick ever since she was born. She has a really bad immune system, ongoing health problems, that means getting common illnesses are bad for her, and sends her to the hospital, and my parents have been fighting hard to keep her healthy and safe and out of the hospital. This has meant that my sister has been the kid my parents focus on more, and this also means that she gets all their patience and understanding. For the sake of the story, we'll call my 15-year-old sister Lily and my 12-year-old sister who gets sick a lot as Sarah. Lily and Sarah are not their real names. Now, my parents take a lot out on Lily and me, meaning that we cannot need or take their attention because then they're the worst. For example, Lily fell when she was 8 years old and she was bleeding a lot. She ran crying to mom because she was upset and sore and my mom got so mad at her and asked her if she couldn't see that she was dealing with Sarah. Mom scolded her super hard and claimed she wasn't a baby and had no reason to cry over it or run to her about it. Another instance is when Lily was forgotten at school 
school when she was seven years old and she was crying in the car on the way home. My dad scolded her for acting up and he told her that she was big enough to understand accidents can happen and she cried to me when she got home. Lily was also at one point having some trouble at school and the principal called our parents and requested a meeting. They were really temperamental with her and for days they would ask her some hard questions. They would say, don't you see us struggling enough? Why can't you deal with it yourself? Mind you, Lily was 10 years old. Now, I struggle with math. I always have and I always will. A few years ago, I was sick for two weeks and then my parents kept me home for another two so that I wouldn't bring anything else home to Sarah. Now, I needed a lot of help to catch up with my math and my teacher needed my parents' signature just to keep me for extended help after school. My parents said they would sign it but forgot and got mad when I reminded them. Then, my teacher called and asked for them to have it in the next day. Well, my parents told me that I was so selfish with their time and they were so bad-tempered with me. I also, at one point, broke my arm when I was younger and my parents were called to the hospital. My mom showed up and yelled at me that I should be ashamed of myself for taking her attention away from Sarah who needed her. There are some specific examples as well. We have to take a lot of steps just to keep Sarah away from sicknesses that we might pick up. We do our best to not make her sick and I never minded because I totally got it. But I do hate how my parents treated me and Lily. Now, my parents are struggling. My dad lost his job and makes less and both my parents are very stressed out. They asked me to take some of the weight off their shoulders and try to help them. They wanted me to give them time off and give some money from my part-time job into the household. But I refused. I'll be moving out as soon as I turn 18 because that is exactly what I've been saving for. And my parents don't deserve my help when they resent me for ever needing it as their kid. They have not been good parents to me in years, but they were before. Well, my parents got so mad and told me that I'm so unfair to them. So honestly, am I the jerk for not wanting to help them out? What should I do? I don't think you're the jerk at all, and I'm really glad to see that you're placing the blame on your parents and not your sick sister. It seems like you can see the distinction, because it doesn't seem like Sarah would want you or Lily to get treated this way at all. And by the way, the fact that your parents would be so antagonistic towards you and your other sister, simply because you have some kind of like, I don't know, needs that need to be fulfilled, that in my opinion is so toxic. It doesn't mean that you don't have a sister that gets really sick all the time, but it does mean that they should have been better parents growing up. So to that end, I don't blame you for moving out. I would get out of that house as well if I was in your shoes, because based on the way they're acting, this behavior, in my opinion, will probably just continue. And you do not deserve that in the slightest. Am I the jerk for yelling at my brother's girlfriend? All because I feel like she's trying to get rid of me. Because right now, they've been conspiring to ship me off back to my mother in Korea, who has blatantly expressed in action that she does not care about me. And at this point, I seriously don't know what to do. Here's what happened. Okay, so I think my brother's girlfriend, who we will call Jane, is trying to get rid of me. Jane is not her real name. I live with my brother because after my parents divorced, none of them wanted me, so my brother took me in. We lived together alone until about a year ago when he got a girlfriend. She doesn't live with us, but she is at our apartment a lot. I don't really like her, but I already know he kind of has some resentment towards me because he had to take care of me even when my parents were still together and he couldn't have a life because he was always busy with me. I think they want to get married and I'm scared about where I will go. For reference, I'm a 15-year-old female. My mom doesn't live in the country. She went back to Korea after the divorce and my dad is busy with his new family. Anyways, after school, I wanted to use my brother's phone to watch something. I saw a notification come up at the top and it was from my mom. I was really curious because I don't talk to my mom like ever and I didn't think that he did either. Long story short, he wants to send me to live with my mom in Korea because Jane wants to move in and start a family. She said that when they start their family, they don't want to be looking after a teenager as well. Now, I didn't tell him anything and I just put the phone back. I went to sleep really scared and now today I went to my cousin's house and I told him what my brother was planning to do and he told his mom. Now, for some background and a reference, I didn't do anything wrong. I'm always nice to her and I just don't know why she doesn't like me. I really don't want to move. I mean, I have friends here and everything. I thought he loved me and wouldn't want to make me go back to her. My cousin's mom ended up asking him why he was going to send me to live with my mom and he asked her how she knew that. She said that I told my cousin and he told her. Well, my brother took me back home because he didn't want to cause a scene at my aunt's house. When he got back, he asked me how I knew and I told him I saw his text message with our mom about how he was sending me away. I was really mad and I just started yelling at him. He just tried to hug me and sat down on the couch with his head down, not talking. Then, like 10 minutes later, Jane comes in. When she came 
came into the living room, she asked what happened, and my brother said that she knows. Then, Jane tried to talk to me, and I stood up and started yelling that I don't know why she has a problem with me, but I'm his sister, so I'm not leaving. I also called her some names because I was really angry. Then, to my surprise, my brother pushed my shoulder and told me to go to my room. I asked why, and he yelled at me to go to my room again. At this point, Jane was crying. I went to my room, and I cried as well. I still think he's going to send me away, and I don't know why she doesn't like me because I didn't do anything to her. So am I the jerk for yelling at my brother's girlfriend? I told my friends about this and they said I shouldn't have yelled because she probably has her reasons to want me to be with my mother. What should I do? No, I don't think you're the jerk. I think your friends have no idea what they're talking about and honestly, if I was in your shoes, I would not care about Jane's reasons for me wanting to go back to my mom in the slightest. Your mom and dad gave up on you. They are not good parents and they're just going to treat you the same way if you move back in with either of them. Like, they made it very clear that they don't want to take care of you, so your brother had to step up because they're awful parents, and now he wants to send you back to those people who literally don't care about you? Like, if I was in your shoes, I would be furious as well, because it really does seem like Jane is trying to work against you, and she's trying to get rid of you despite the fact that you're doing everything right. You're not mean to her, you're not rude, and it sounds like you're not causing problems like around the house or at home or anything like that, so for them to conspire against you is so uncalled for. I can't imagine being 15 years old and feeling like everybody's trying to abandon me off to somebody else. And sure, your brother was forced to take you in and basically become a parent, and that's not okay. But for them to try and ship you off back to parents who don't care about you, in my opinion, is so unbelievably toxic. Now, when it comes to you moving back with your mom, honestly, I don't think there's anything you can really do about that. Like, if your brother wants to ship you off back to Korea with your mom, who clearly is awful, then unfortunately, that's kind of what's going to happen. But in my opinion, regardless of the fact that they want to have their own space as a couple, I think that it's awful that they would ship you off back to someone who doesn't care about you. Because I know if I was in your shoes, I would feel completely betrayed by someone I thought I could trust. Am I the jerk for wanting to attend my mom's funeral instead of going to my wife's family dinner that just so happens to be on the same day? Because right now, my wife is pressuring me to go to the dinner instead of my mom's funeral. And at this point, I seriously don't know what to do. Here's what happened. I'm a 35-year-old male, and I'm currently in a really tough spot, and I need some unbiased perspectives on whether I'm in the wrong here. My mother passed away after being ill, and her funeral is scheduled for the same day as a big dinner hosted by my wife's family. Now, I understand the importance of family gatherings, especially to my wife and her family. However, my mom's funeral is something I simply cannot miss. She was my rock and my best friend. Her sudden passing has left me devastated, and I feel like I owe it to her to be there to bid her a proper farewell. Now, the dilemma arose when my wife learned about the funeral arrangements conflicting with her family dinner. She immediately insisted that I skip the funeral and attend the dinner instead. Now, what was her reasoning, you might be asking? She argues that her family has always been there for us, and it's crucial that we show our support by attending their events. Now, fair enough, but it's not like I'm ditching the dinner for something trivial. Now, here's the part where it really gets messy. My wife and her sister, who's particularly vocal about this, have been calling me a mama's boy and accusing me of putting my family before hers. They've been pressuring me to prioritize the family dinner over my mom's funeral, saying things like, your mom would want you to support us, and you just need to grow up and put us first. Now, the thing is, is that my mom adored my wife. They got along really well, and my mom always considered her as her own daughter, and my mom put her in the will. So it's not like attending the funeral would be disrespectful to my wife or her family. It's just a matter of honoring my mom's memory and saying my final goodbyes. So would I be the jerk for wanting to attend my mom's funeral because right now I'm seriously at such a crossroads and I really don't know what to do. Wow, this story really upset me. Like seriously, this is insane. First of all, of course you're not the jerk for going to your mother's funeral. Any sane individual would be like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry for your loss. Of course, please go to your funeral. If there's anything I can do for you, please let me know or anything like that. Any normal person would say something along those lines to be like, I'm here for you, I love you and I'm gonna support you. So when I read this story and I see the wife is like, oh my gosh, you need to put us first. You need to stop being such a mama's boy. Like, I actually felt my blood boil when I read that because I can't imagine being with someone who's going to act like that. You attending your mom's funeral is not you being a mama's boy. This is you trying to honor and mourn the loss of your mother. And it sounds like the original poster was very close with his mom, which is not a bad thing, by the way. Like, the fact that your wife and her family are acting like this is such an inconvenience for them is seriously insane to me. Like, what planet are we on right now? Your husband
husband just lost his mom. How can you seriously be obsessed with this family dinner instead of standing by your husband and being there for him in his time of need? Like, this stupid dinner can wait. Like, I can't believe she's taking that side. Like, your wife's opinion, and it is just an opinion, by the way, is completely appalling. And I just can't believe that she's trying to put this kind of pressure on you, especially considering the loss that you just went through. So no, of course you are not the jerk. Your wife and her family are completely out of their mind if they think this is somehow appropriate. Because you have every right to go to your mom's funeral and try to find some solace in this loss in your life. And anyone who tries to get in the way of that, in my opinion, has no business trying to be involved in your life. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. To finish listening to all the stories, check out the playlist at the top of the description. And if you want some chill music to put on in the background, check out easymode.com. If you like Am I the Jerk, subscribe to Am I the Genius. Everything will be linked down below in the description.